You're watching Sports Beat. <laughs> Hand off to Zach Moss, second level 20, 25, 30. Our college football preview series continues for the next half hour. We focus on the Utah Utes, and expectations have never been higher for a Utah team entering a season. Yeah, the hype isn't just limited to the Wasatch Front. National football writers see the Utes as not only a Pac-12 championship contender, but a dark horse for the college football playoff. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of people around the country are excited about the Utes. The Pac-12 preseason poll did nothing to slow the hype train. The Utes not only picked to win the South by the media, but they're the pick to win the Pac-12 championship over Oregon in the North. Yeah, the Utes received 12 votes, Oregon 11. Washington 9 in the Pac-12 championship voting. They were picked to win the South by a wide margin, 206 points over USC's 167. Arizona State, UCLA, Arizona, and Colorado round out the South. Oregon given a very slight edge over Washington to win the North, followed by Stanford, Washington State, Cal, and Oregon State. The youths were also well represented on the Pac-12 preseason all-conference team. Five players named first team more than any other team in the conference. Zach Moss, Lucky Foto, Bradley and I, Julian Blackman, and Jalen Johnson named first team. Darren Paulo, John Penasini, and Britton Covey named second team. Cole Fotheringham, Javelin Guidry, and new punter Ben Lennon are honorable mention. And how about that schedule set up for Utah to have a special season? Three non-conference games to open the season, of course, starting the season off with their rival BYU. The Utes should be favored in Vegas in all but one of these games. A November trip to Seattle to take on Washington be the exception. There's no Oregon or Stanford on the schedule this year. The Utes have just five road games and leave the state for just four of them. Also, they have 20 or more days between each road game. That makes things a little easier. So with all that said, it's easy to see why expectations are so high for this team. Yeah, but this is unfamiliar territory still for a program that is used to being an underdog. So how will they handle all of this hype? Utah reps the South for the first time. All the expectations, you're picked to win the Pac-12 championship. How are you guys dealing with those expectations? Do you embrace it? Well, we, I think to some degree we embrace it. Um, I think it's still at the back of our minds. We don't really sit there and be like, wow, we're number one. Let it give you confidence. Let, let, it, let it solidify what you already know because you're hyping yourself up in your mind, so who cares if someone else is doing it? Just maintain that humility, that quiet confidence that you've always had. I can definitely tell that guys use that to motivate us. We don't really use that to get a pass in a sense. We just use it to keep us going and to have something to work for. Intercepted, Jalen Johnson. It's not the end goal that we're focused on, it's how we're gonna get there. We try to take you know, things in increments, take one game at a time. We still take the uh, underdog approach to everything, um, still grinding it out, same mentality that we've had, that we had to build up since joining the Pac-12. All of our mentalities and our expectations for ourselves pretty much exceeds any other expectations that come our way. Regardless of where we're picked or what the situation is, we've got an end goal to win the Pac-12, as I'm sure every other team in the Pac-12 has. But the day-to-day -day application of that is, what do we got to do today to take a step in that direction? He put us on a high pedestal. We don't even want to knock us down off of it. So we know that we have a target on our back. So we're just working and trying to tone in to really stay up there. Falling short of our expectations, our own, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it won't affect us in the way that, you know, we're trying to live up to other people's expectations and whatnot, because us ourselves hold ourselves to a higher standard. You could not get overconfident or cocky in this program without being shot down by coaches or leaders on the team. It's just the culture thing. Negative to it is if you let it get to your head and, and uh, sidetrack you a little bit and make you think you got all the answers. So as long as our guys keep it in perspective and understand that, first of all, it's not gonna help us win any games for certain, and it, and it uh, is nothing more than really than a, just a fun way to start the season, then uh, I think we'll be all right. But uh, if we let it uh, you know, start making us think that we've, we've arrived, then you've got problems.
Utes. Another reason expectations are so high for the Utes is the experience and talent on the roster. In January, Lucky Fotu, Bradley and Nye, Julian Blackman, and Zach Moss put off the NFL to make a run together at a Pac-12 championship. Yeah, those are talented guys. Zach Moss, he's got a chance to become the all-time leading rusher in Utah history, but returning for his senior season was about more than just football. When Lucky Fotu and Bradley and I and Julian Blackman and Zach Moss say they're coming back, what was your reaction? Pac-12 championship. I mean, those guys are important to our team and can really help us and have helped us up until this point. So, I mean, it was just kind of a reload in a sense, just let's put our bullets back in and go at it. It, it kind of solidified the real feeling that we all had that we could be really good this year. Each and every individual that you mentioned, all of our mentalities and our expectations for ourselves pretty much exceeds any other expectations that come our way. I think every, every one of them made the decision on their own. There was no collaborative effort, you know, we're all going to come back or we're all going to leave. And I think all of them made the right decision. We definitely have no regrets of what has transpired in those past few years. And it's been a very, very enjoyable ride. Just a feeling in the atmosphere that people know we have potential and more potential than we've probably ever had. So when, that, when something like that happens, it's just kind of like, OK, they know. We know. Now we got to just go. There's risk coming back. There's no doubt about that. But I think the percentages are definitely in their favor, that more good can come out of it that, that outweighs the risk. Gives it to Zach Moss, runs to daylight, and runs to the end zone. Touchdown. Why did you decide to come back to the University of Utah? Uh, I decided to come back. Um, I wanted to get my degree, for one. Uh, make sure I get that for me and myself and my family. Um, and set a role, uh, be an example um, to the kids back home in my uh, community and stuff like that. Um, and also, I didn't really want to pass up on an opportunity to play with these guys again. Toss sweep right side, Zach. He puts his foot on the ground. He's at the 10. He trips man. Stays on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! You have a chance to become the all-time leading rusher in Utah history. Does that mean something to you? Uh, it definitely means something to me. Um, when I came into Utah, I wanted to walk out of here as being one of the best to ever play the football at the school and definitely be uh, the best running back to uh, play here. And I think accomplishing some of those goals uh, is very special because a lot of guys that play college football can't say they have done something like that. We've had some really good backs come through the program, and, and for him to be able to leave if he has the type of year that we hope he has as the all-time most productive back in the history of Utah football, that's a, that's a, lot, that's a great accomplishment. So you have unfinished business? Nobody there. Pretty much, yeah. What is that business? To win the Pac-12 championship, um, be the first team in uh, school history to get that done, and then uh, hopefully get a berth um, in the college football playoffs. It all begins Thursday, August 29th in Provo. For the first time ever, Utah opens a season against their rivals. Yeah, the game has no bearing on the Pac-12 title aspirations, of course, but don't even for a second believe the Utes don't care about beating that team down south. To the corner of the end zone, touchdown! Oh, oh my goodness! What's it like opening the season against BYU? Is it different? Yeah, I mean, I've never opened the season against BYU. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, you're going to go from zero to 100 in about, you know, one kickoff because it gets intense. And we know that they are a great team and we have a lot of respect for them. I think the fans take it more uh, personal than the players. To be honest, I have a lot of friends on the BYU team. And, uh, you know, my uncle's coach at BYU. It's not as serious as, as, serious as it seems for us players. Uh, we play the game and we entertain people uh, we're entertainers that's what we do and so just that to, to get the fans riled up it's all for the fans we're just coming in trying to start off one to know i mean i'm assuming that that's their goal as well so i mean we're just both coming in trying to be one to know to start off the season try to send it to overtime and it hit the oh <laughs> and the game does it honestly if you go back in history and look at every byu utah game it takes on some sort of life of its own. You'll have three zero games and you'll have games up in the high 30s. I, I remember the Vegas Bowl. It's, that was another tale of two halves. We know we're going to have to play really well in order to come out victorious down there. And it's exciting. I mean, this is, you know, 
It's a rivalry game. It's, it's fun. We have to take our first break. When we come back, a word from the rest of the Pac-12. Utah is really good. I love playing Utah. Was the rest of the Pac-12 surprised about the Utes being picked to win the conference championship? What do they think about playing the Utes? William Blackman, five, four, three, two, one, touchdown! And later, we'll get your juices flowing with a taste of what you might see this fall, the official KSL Sports hype video. It'll get you excited. That's all coming up when our football preview continues. Being picked to win a Pac-12 championship is new territory for the Utah football program. It may have been surprising to some, but not coaches and players who face the Utes on the field. The respect for the program continues to grow around the Pac-12. When I talk about Utah, what do you think of? Physical. That's probably their biggest attribute that's a known thing around the Pac-12. Oh man, I love playing Utah. Utah is one of my favorite teams to play there. Hard-nosed football team. Oh man, the defense. Oh my goodness, you know, they have so much. They play hard, man. Utah is really good. I love playing Utah. Utah has always been a physical team. Uh, Coach Whittingham does a, does a great job getting them ready to go. Oh, I think they try to make it physical. I think it starts with what, you know, Kyle has established there for a long time. He just got a great amount of respect for what they do defensively. We, us as an offensive line for Washington, we got to be on our P's and Q's. They fly around on defense and, and they're really tough to block. Even playing down there in Salt Lake, that's a, that's a great atmosphere. Semi-hostile environment, physical team. The crowd is always loud. In that high altitude, it's tough to play in. It's a war zone. It's a war zone. It's some, some very disciplined headhunters on that defense, and, and they're going to they gonna come after you. They hit you in the mouth real quick, and if you're not ready for it, it's going to be a long game. They're one of the toughest Pac-12 teams. They're one of those teams that, man, I'm telling you, they're going to play from whistle to whistle. Like, they're not going to stop. They're going to keep going. They are the most physical team I've played um, since I've been in college or since I've been here at ASU. That whole Utah defense is, is, is special, and uh, any chance you get to watch them is, is huge. A lot of respect throughout the conference. All right, we're going to catch our breath for a second, but when we come back, a deep dive into the offense and defense. Expect a big senior year out of Tyler. Expect him to be a team leader. Yeah, you know the defense will be good, but can Tyler Huntley make his senior year special? Can his offensive line help keep him healthy? And what impact will new offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig have on the Utes offense? It's all coming up after this. All right, welcome back. You know, you can always count on Utah having a great defense. 2019 won't be any different. Seven starters return, including the entire defensive line. The success on that side of the ball starts up front, no doubt. And the Utes, they have one of the best D lines in the country. Another year, another great defensive line at Utah. We're blessed. You know, <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah, we've, we've been fortunate through the years to, to have uh, some of the best defensive lines in the country. We'll see how things play out, but this could be as good or, or better than any of them uh, preceding. But, uh, you know, there's a lot that has to be accomplished between now and, and when we start playing. Monster guys, and they all came back, and they're just getting better. So, I mean, that's going to make our job easier, having those guys up there rushing the quarterback. He's sacked from behind by Bradley and I. Do you believe you're the best pass rusher in the Pac-12? I believe so. Um, not just because um, what people portray me as, uh, just because of my ability to prepare. Intercepted! Jalen Johnson intercepts Daniels. Where does Jalen Johnson rank among all the cornerbacks that you've had at, at Utah? Well, Eric Weddle was a corner here, but he was a, a safety at the next level, so that's maybe not a, a fair comparison because Jalen is a pure corner. Uh, and I got to say, he's as good or better than anyone we've ever had come through here. I believe he's one of the top two or three corners in the country this year. He believes that too. He, he should. He should. Do you feel you're the best cornerback in the Pac-12? I feel like I'm the best corner in the country, just based on my preparation, based on how I come about the game. I mean, that's just my confidence in everything I do. Yeah, you got to be confident. If not, you can, you can set yourself up to get beat if you're not confident in what you're doing or confident that you're going to stop the person in front of you. Quick throw outside, intercepted. Picked off to the outside, Julian Blackman. Move Julian Blackman to safety. Why'd you make that decision? We want to get the five, much like the offensive line, you want to get your five best guys out there. We feel, first of all, that Julian's best fit and his best opportunity at the next level is as a safety. What's your question mark on defense? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't say. I mean, we, 
people would think the first obvious thing is, well, you lost Chase Hansen and Cody Barton, but uh, we got a couple guys, Francis Bernard, Manny Bowen, and Devin Lloyd at that linebacker spot that we think are going to be, uh, you know, as productive as what uh, Chase and Cody were. That's a big statement because they were they were great for us, but but these guys are talented. You know the defense will be great, but to reach their potential and meet such lofty expectations, the youth must also have an explosive offense. Kyle Whittingham turned to a familiar name to make that happen. Andy Ludwig takes over an offense that returns seven starters, including a senior quarterback, Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley, what are we going to see from Tyler this year? Expect a big senior year out of Tyler. Expect him to be a team leader. Uh, we expect him to, to uh, be a consistent uh, performer week in and week out. I think he's going to come out more of a laser focus than ever. He's going to lead his team in the right way. And um, uh, Coach Lovey definitely believes in him, and we definitely did too. He's put on 25 pounds in the offseason. That's been the problem the last two years. He hasn't been able to finish the season. And so job one for us and him is to get him healthy, uh, keep him healthy, I should say, throughout the season. Andy Ludwig, what difference do you think this is going to make for the offense? What are your expectations of the offense with him? It's great to have him back. Uh, me and him are, are on the same wavelength in virtually every respect. Uh, he hasn't changed a whole lot since the last time he was here. Obviously, his offense has evolved, uh, as has all of college football. But as far as his meticulous uh, attention to detail, the way he operates, his methodical approach to things hasn't changed, and I, and I respect everything he does uh, with his offense. If you have a question mark on offense, what do you think it is? Offensive line. We've still got uh, to find a, a couple more answers up front. We have some graduate transfers that are joining us. Uh, we have a JC player, Bam Olaseni, that we hope is going to join us. And Jim Harding, if there's anybody that you want to put that, uh, you know, that responsibility on us, Jim Harding, he'll get it done. I think what makes a successful offensive coordinator is it's one thing to know the game. It's a whole other thing to teach it. He knows the steps and the progression of how and when things should be implemented. And so that's, that's what gives me a lot of confidence about this transition. The transition's been pretty easy. I think um, it's a lot different from what we've been running the last two years with the air rate system, kind of. Uh, this is more of a pro-style offense. I just think that we have so much talent this year. I mean, I said that last year. This year, we have most of our guys returning. So. Uh, you get that with an offensive coordinator with that much experience and I don't know, I just feel like we'll be very dynamic. You won't be able to really predict what we're going to do. Up next, our dynamic 2019 Utah football hype video and our predictions for the Utes this season. Are we buying all the hype? Find out next. The Utes are loaded with talent on both sides of the ball, proven players that have been making plays for multiple seasons. If it all comes together, imagine how much fun this team will be. Here's a glimpse of just how special this team could be in 2019. A handoff to Zach Moss, second level 20, 25, 30, touchdown! Let's 
screen out to Moss. Get him in some space. And again, he's knocking people over. What a night for Zach Moss. See the sound? gets out to the 45. Slowed him up, and then the finish by Jalen Johnson. Picked off to the outside, Julian Blackman. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown! <laughs> Surveys the field, throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown! Big kid, 6'3", 254, he's from Hawaii. All right, it's prediction time, and, uh, you know, this Utah team, in my opinion, may be the best they've had since joining the Pac-12. They opened the season with a win against BYU, followed it up with three more before the first hiccup of the season against Washington State. After a bye, the Utes come back with three straight wins against Oregon State, Arizona State, and Cal before losing their second of the season. The other Apple Cup opponent, Washington. Washington gets the win there. The Utes will close out the season with three straight wins to finish 10-2 and and play in the Pac-12 championship game. I'm not only drinking the Utes Kool-Aid this year, I'm guzzling it. <laughs> the Utes are going to be favored in every game but one. A November 2nd trip to Seattle to take on Washington. That will be their only regular season loss. They go 11-1, win the South easily. They'll face Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game and beat the Ducks in San Jose. Mm -hmm. Then the question will be, do the Utes at 12-1 make the college football playoff? Yes. At the very least, they play in the Rose Bowl for the first time in program history. Let's get it started.